Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Civilization 6 as Egypt, particularly the Ptolemaic Egypt who gets plus one food and plus one culture for resources along floodplains. She also gets plus one appeal to all adjacent uh, to floodplains and all adjacent tiles, which is very, very nice. And then she has the standard Egypt bonuses of Itaru, which is extra wonder production, the Mariani, Chariot Archer and the Sphinx. You might be able to hear in the background my rabbit is currently shredding some cardboard. Such is the life of being a bun owner. Uh, real quick, we'll just cut over to the part where I explain all the game settings and all the mods and how you can get them. Most notably, a whole bunch of UI mods, all of which will be linked in the description of this video, including a map mod that allowed me to generate this really cool map. If you're interested in using the map mod yourself, I will quickly go over the settings I used. It is a little bit complicated, but the standard sort of stuff like deity, right? You have to set map to got lakes, resources to abundance, star position to legendary, none for all all of the land masses except for Pangaea, random mountains, random mountain clumps, detailed rivers, extra tectonics, globe based game. Uh, all these are basically standard settings as well as we follow down. And then for the mountain level, I went low. And for the hill level, I went high. For the volcano level, I went low. And just all these settings have been very gently tweaked and customized and massaged to get me a pretty damn cool map. There is the map random seed and the game random seed as well. I will probably post a link to the turn one of the save file in my Discord if I remember. This probably isn't the correct seed because it randomly generated it when I exited out. So now you know how I made this map and how we're going to be playing now I would like to play Egypt in kind of like a preserve style game. Um, I think that would be kind of fun. I'm not actually interested in winning the game. I'm more interested in building, building a beautiful empire. So we do have to kind of talk about our starting position. We obviously want to be adjacent to as many of these really nice resources as possible. I think I'll do a little bit of a scout here. Okay. Um, plenty of resources. I would like to settle off of coast, although this could be a good mausoleum game. It's always good to get mausoleum. It's just a really damn good wonder. So there could be a mausoleum city down here um, somewhere. One, two, three. Um, you know, could be... No, that's too close, I'm afraid. I would like to preserve these. these. Are these on floodplains? This one's not on a floodplain, so it wouldn't matter if I settled on it. But I could do something like uh, this. This kind of appeals to me a little bit. I definitely would like to get Edamananki this game. I probably will be rushing it in order to try and get it as soon as possible. Yeah, I will I will definitely be rushing Edamananki, so I'd maybe like to get a scout and a settler out to try and make that happen. I could also go early builder and improve these, but I think... The growth we have, I think in place here is fine. Um, we have a 2-2 two -two tile. We're, and we have a 2-2 two tile, two -two tile here. So we have at least two high production 2-2 two -two tiles. And then there might be a couple in the fog of war here. And I'm afraid to move. We can always buy out to this one. We will have plenty of gold with the maze. So I think I'm just going to go settle in place. And this will be a rather low production start. But it will be a high culture start. So we will get to preserves pretty quick. And now you can take a look at that appeal. I would love to get a Earth Goddess Pantheon this game. That would be amazing if we could... Um, we're going to open with the scout. We should grow incredibly quickly because we have that incredibly powerful plus one food and plus one culture uh, on this rice tile. We should be able to do a lot of work with that. Oh, lovely. We found a very early tribal village. If this was a builder or a scout, this would like supercharge my early game. Okay, 40 gold is all right. It does allow me to potentially purchase a 2-2 two -two tile when I need it. And we will grow really quickly because we're working a four food tile. In fact, we're growing way faster than normal, which means we should get to riding nice and quick. Um, the only thing is I'm worried I might not meet another sieve in time to actually get that. Now we're working the maze here, but I'd rather work the production or the maze. I think I want to work the production because I'd like to get a settler out. Although the extra culture is kind of insane. So maybe we'll do that instead. There's Code of Law, so we get God King in as soon as possible. We'll also plug in Discipline so we can fight barbs more effectively. Looks like we are to the south of the map. We have found some snow and we have been scouted by barbs, which is slightly unfortunate. I would like to go craftsman early and I would like to start planning out how I'm actually going to design my empire. I don't know if we're going to get to Corvi early, but I'll, I'll kind of push in the direction of craftsmanship. I'll probably switch away from it. But the border growth here is genuinely insane. Oh, he's getting pushed. Can I get this kill? Well, this is plus one kill and a little bit of XP for both of my units. And we did manage to find Venice. And we were the first to find Venice. So we can estimate that there won't be a sieve to our north, um, at least within scouting range. And that plus two gold is really, really valuable. Venice's ability isn't particularly interesting, but it is fine. I would like to get a settler out. And I want the settler to finish about the time I finish writing. So I'm going to go ahead and prioritize working the production tiles here. A little bit of shuffling around. So that gets that down to 11 turns. Do I want gold or food here? Do I want to grow in seven turns or do I want to get an extra two gold per turn? Well, we're building a settler, so extra growth actually doesn't matter. So I'd actually like to slow down my growth. In fact, I would rather buy another production tile if indeed I could get one. So I will save 
for... Um, I tell you what I do. If I take a turn to work a little bit of gold, I can buy another production tile next turn and then I might be able to get me down to like a slightly faster settler timing. So I work a tiny little chunk of extra gold. We buy another tile. We switch you guys to those two productive tiles and now we're down to eight turns. We did actually manage to shave two turns. So playing around with your, your pop early game is really, really valuable. But I wanted to make a really cool river filled map. Oh, there's the flood. Now, we don't take any damage there. And we got plus one food on that tile. That's amazing. I don't think I'll be getting a golden age this game, unfortunately. And that barb camp is actually comical where it just spawned. I don't believe you that it spawned right there. That is amazing. I might have to redirect my first settler, which I'm totally fine with doing. So taking a look here, let's get a little bit more scouting info down here. This is definitely going to be maybe a preserve heavy appeal based game it would be nice to settle near the tobacco to be able to get uh, another faith so i'm going to move in that direction so i would like to get to four population and to be able to work four two production tiles by the time i get to etamananki that's going to require a little bit of gold i can get that much gold no problem it's the growing to four population that's going to be harder so i'm going to prioritize working food so i can get up to that point Adam and Ike Rush, I don't have time to get two settlers out. I can maybe get one. I did not mean to finish craftsmanship, but the fact that we finished it is not the end of the world. There's plus one population. Excellent. Might be able to take that barb camp as well. So the plus one population means I could theoretically go for five pop. If I could get the five pop, it would boost early empire and it would mean I would have five workers in the city. Um, our culture line right now is actually really, really strong. So I'm very, very happy with that. My exact positioning on this city. I think I want to work that tobacco early to get my Pantheon a few turns sooner. So I'm going to settle right there. Boom. In this first city, I'm going to go ahead and get a slinger. I think we have enough culture to carry us without getting a monument. So I think I have time to get a slinger. So writing is completed. We can go ahead and get started on Etamananki. Uh, we work... Oh, I settled where the hills were. That's actually really bad. Now, let's do a little bit of mental planning. So I think a very obvious national park for my empire will be one that fits in here. And I'm going to want to base where I put my preserves and things like that around that. So here's a really natural fit for a pair of preserves in between these cities, I think, with uh, national parks coming later down the line. And yes, our goal is to essentially turn this entire empire into one gigantic giga national park. That's the objective. Will it be effective? Will it be useful? Will it be good? It's a great question. I'll answer that later. So I think a picture of how we're going to be doing these national parks is starting to form in my mind. I've got like a national park here, a national park here. I've got my preserves weaving in between them. And I think that's going to work for me in the long term. But I can go ahead and hide those pins now. That is the beauty of the detailed map tax mod. And let's go ahead and get started on the Etam and Nanki because where the gaps are in this is going to inform where Etam and Nanki and potentially theater squares can go which is honestly not in many places. But this is a pretty reasonable Edamananki spot right here. I'll get a lot of value from it. Um, and I probably won't really build many districts, maybe like squeeze in the occasional theater square and maybe a few harbors. I'm mostly going to be focused on the preserve as a route to victory. Is it any good? I have absolutely no idea. I want to buy more productive tiles. Let me, let me set the city to focus on production. If I buy this, I'll get another two production. And then in a few turns, I can buy this. We got that down to how much now? That's 20 turns on that. That's a, a little bit more reasonable. Pretty rough that both of these tiles went to Memphis. I should have realized that I was going to do that. I, my brain just forgot that that's how that works. And it looks like Spain is to my east. So I'm going to want to forward settle him if at all possible. We also did unlock horses, which is giving us even higher quality tiles over here. And it is time for us to take Earth Goddess, giving us plus one faith from tiles with breathtaking appeal. Perfect. So now we should see a really, really strong faith line appear, uh, which is going to be super, super useful at various points throughout the game. Buying great people, stuff like that. We could found a religion. I don't think we will this game. Uh, we just don't have the production for it. And plus, I want to play in kind of a... I want to try a new build. I want to play a little kooky, a little weird. I want to I wanna, I wanna experiment. We cleared a barb camp for a little bit of era score. So that will help us a lot. I think we're going to have a hard time getting the era score that we need. There's always a chance. We only need 25. And I mean, we are finding lots of tribal villages. Huge. Lots more floods going. Five tiles fertilized. Oh, what a beautiful day. Now, if only I'd been able to get the Great Bath. The problem is Great Bath just goes so quickly that you have to rush out of Benanke. It's almost impossible to get both unless you have some insane boost. But there's mysticism. So we can place down our preserves to lock in a really cheap price if we want. We don't need to place them down yet, um, but it will be coming up in the near future. I think I would rather just work on other empire-wide infrastructure like my traders and stuff like that first. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a golden age. We've hit a couple of tribal villages. We found a couple of players. We're going to get four from Edamanaki. We didn't found a religion, so there's no error score there. 
Might have to live without a Golden Age here. I think getting Edamananki instead of a Golden Age is a reasonable trade-off. Plus two science and plus one production to all Marsh Tiles in my empire, as well as plus one science and production to all floodplains in this city. The yields in this city, if you look at the land, just like, just look at the land, it's starting to already look kind of insane. The big thing would be, could I get like more growth in Rakadet? I really need to be building settlers. I also need to think about where my government plaza is going to go. It's going to fit in here somewhere. And so to that end, I might be willing to kill a national park here to make room for that kind of stuff. So I decided to shuffle things around slightly. I now have a theatre square and a government plaza placed in my capital. And the purpose of these is to be able to use Pingala in my capital to maximise the total amount of stuff we get from great works which will be really nice. And I think this will be a Reina city because there'll be at least four national parks inside Memphis all benefiting from Reina's um, abilities. But yeah, you can kind of see that I have a massive carpet of national parks planned out. And I this is the goal, right? This is, this is what we want to achieve. We want to have a massive, huge amount of national parks all being boosted by preserves and as few normal districts as possible. So with that completed, we have early empire. I'm going to get myself a second scout. We might be able to squeak out a tiny little bit more error score. I'm like, aggr I'm aggressively scouting right now in the hope that I could like steal a barb camp or something. Like every little tribal village that I can yoink is a huge amount of like era score. I've stolen so many. Uh, there's the wheel boosted at least. So we could build our Marianne chariot archer. If I could get the Mar if I could get enough gold for the chariot archer, how would I get that much gold? Am I gonna do the diplomatic favor exploit? Am I gonna diplo favor exploit to buy a chariot archer to hit a classical golden age? Yes, actually I am. Uh, cue a montage, because we are going to be here for a while buying all this Diplo favor and selling it off for a profit. The goal is to reach 360 gold. Uh, we're at 136. Now this is pod racing. Okay, they won't sell me anymore, but we managed to get up to 160 gold. Uh, let's tell the city to focus on gold. Tell this city to focus on gold. Maybe we can sell off some resources. Focus on nothing but gold. I am willing to brave these forest fires if it means I have a chance of getting enough gold to do this. 212 gold on that round. <sighs> Nowhere near enough. Not with just two turns to go. I think we're gonna miss that golden age. That is so depressing and soul destroying. We got so close just to lose it all. We tried so hard, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. Now here's a question. Do we want to go for Pingala or do we want to go for Reina first? I feel like there's some potential here for Reina if we go for forestry management. I do feel like Pingala is just the best default choice. We won't be going Magnus this game because we won't be chopping. Um, so let's just take Pingala, slap him in there. We have 50% settler production, so we can go ahead and get started on a couple more settlers nice and early. I'm not loving this invasion force that's coming for me. Um, quite unlucky, quite unlucky, quite unlucky. Maybe I should have gone for a religion this game. It probably would have been optimal, but to hell with religion. That's what I say. Let's do a trade route with Spain in the hope that this improves his relationship with me. It's not much in the way of gold, but I am blocking his settler, which is part of the goal here. I want to get at least two, three cities pushing towards him. We have found an abundance of iron, which is quite nice. We have really, really good yields for like the state of my empire. Under no circumstances do I want to actually steal this settler. I just want to block it from going where it wants. I did meet Portugal. Nice to meet you. I also met Menelik as well as Norway. So that I've met most of the civs in the game as it currently stands. I don't like this settler. I think our goal is to forward settle here. He does look like he might be potentially approaching me for war, which is not good. I need to get my units back to defend. I'll get myself some... I think a Mariani Chariot Archer actually defends me perfectly here. So if I just grab that, I think I'm good. My hope is that these units are just going to go clear this barb camp and then leave me alone. If that indeed is what happens, I would be very, very happy. I spent a little bit of time doing the diplomatic favor exploit and I'm banking up as much diplo favor as I possibly can get uh, to head into the next era with. I got to have every advantage I can because I'm playing actually a very weak build, but we have what I would consider to be a very powerful plan. There's the Marianu Chariot Archer, so if we can get it into Memphis, Memphis will feel very well defended to me. I do think Spain wants to go to war with me, based on his positioning. Right, so there's the war that I was expecting. But, uh, we have Celestial Navigation now, we can get this chariot into the city. Alternatively, I could just buy another chariot and start cracking heads from afar. I think this attack is honestly a big mistake from Spain because I managed to exploit enough resources to where I should be fairly easily able to defend this. Thousand year flood in the capital, looking good. Everything is nice, there's political philosophy. I would say for this particular build, 
classical republic doesn't actually hold much sway for us, although we would like the housing and amenities. I'll take it purely just because you can plug in more cards and plus one production to us right now is really, really nice. So the most important thing to do when you're defending a city is to get kills. Reduce the number of units that are damaging your cities. But there go my hopes and dreams that this was some peaceful expedition to kill this barb camp over here. What can I do about it? Nothing at the moment. So I need to block this chariot from getting a hit on the city. So I'm going to step forward with this chariot archer, step forward with this chariot archer, shoot here, shoot here, step forward with you and try to bait this warrior away. The worst thing he can do is raise the city and honestly not much has been invested into the city so it would be annoying but I don't think it would be the end of the world. I might have to hit this chariot here to try and bait it into a disadvantageous attack but my Diplo favor is now worth five gold from Menelik uh, which is amazing because I think everyone else is still selling it for free but I can go ahead and sell off all this Diplo favor to Menelik for an absurd amount of gold, which will allow me to do things like get an extra archer here to potentially defend the city. All right, this warrior has to die. This chariot has to die if we can get him. The city has 70 health, so it should survive here in theory. Perfect. Okay, looks like we managed to perfectly survive this. Uh, let's get a little bit of experience on the archer. I'll get experience on this chariot. I'll move this chariot forward and take a level. Most important thing is that we kill enemy units. Two Mariano chariot archers could honestly potentially conquer Spain if I just switched over to military unit production. And I'm angry enough to consider it, uh, to be frank with you. I'm angry enough to consider it. The really powerful thing about the Mariano Chariot Archer is that it doesn't require any strategic resources and I can get a lot of them really quickly here, especially with the Agage card. So I might do that. We'll do a little counter attack on Spain and show them uh, the real meaning of pain. I'm not a fan of this galley hitting Swinette. I may buy myself a galley to defend this city, which is really frustrating because I don't want to spend my gold like this. But I'm selling off all my Diplo favor to uh, Menelik to be able to just make an insane amount of money. I'm going to take Suzerainty of Venice. That's going to be another plus two error score. We could potentially see a golden age here. It's not guaranteed, but we are on pace, especially if I start settling near volcanoes and doing all this kind of stuff. I mean, if you just take stock of the actual tiles that were working in my empire, they're extremely high quality in terms of non-production yields. So like really good on science, really good in culture, really good in faith. It's just where... You know, where production and growth goes, my empire is a little weak. He wants peace. I'm not going to take peace. I want, uh, I need, I need to get vengeance from him, uh, which means I need to get value by attacking him. Uh, we do have a really effective road. Makes the whole process a little bit simpler. So I think a few Mariano chariot archers, a gentle push, pillages lands. We've managed to whittle his army down to next to nothing. And we are theoretically in position to start looking at pillaging. We'll be able to get a bunch of faith, a bunch of food. Let's go ahead and take research around Pingal. That's going to be good for now. I definitely want to get my government plaza down. I definitely want to get my theater square down. And I should also think about my diplomatic quarter. I, in fact, yeah, that's going to be the third district that I build. It'll be just a diplo quarter right there. And then that's going to be all the districts I build in here. We will eventually get a preserve, but it's not going to be priority. Let's go ahead and get that government plaza. I don't know if I'm going to go on an actual conquest here, but we'll, we'll kind of make a feint at least in that direction. His peace deal will get increasingly more desperate as we smash his city to pieces. We don't actually want to take it. We just want to get in here and pillage it and just hurt it. I do think it, um, one thing that I really liked about Old World that did stuff slightly different from Civ is that cities that have taken damage actually lose production. I feel like if a city is under siege, it shouldn't have like, it shouldn't be able to just like produce without issue. You know what I mean? Unless it's your capital, I guess. But this is a great opportunity to level units up um, for future wars. Potentially could level up a scout by conquering that city. Maybe take the city, do a pillage, take the city, sell it back to him in a peace deal. We'll do something to that effect. I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling maybe I'm feeling vengeful tonight and I'll raise it. Well, I don't want everyone to hate me. I just want them to know who's boss. I don't want to become public enemy number one. But this is the painful thing about groves. It's like it's almost impossible to build them early, even if you're going for a grove build. I don't know why. I don't know. This is like how I play every preserve game. It just goes off the rails because I get attacked by the AI and I spend forever building my monuments and granaries because I never improve any tiles. Can I conquer a city with a scout? No. <laughs> No, we cannot. Almost, almost worked. Actually, if I had have done my moves on this turn correctly, it would have worked. I misclicked. Please, just give me an undo button, okay? For single player. Just give me, give me an undo button so I can... <sighs> I could have built a Sphinx to get a Golden Age. God damn it. I could have built a Sphinx. This is the pain and burden of being just good enough at a game to know how bad at it you are. Okay, so I'm going to keep that city and then I'm going to sell it back to him in a peace deal. I don't actually want it. I just want him to think that I want it. I want him to remember that I could have raised it. Finally, 87 turns into the game, we can place our first preserve. Took us a very, very long time to get to this point. Right, let's talk to Spain and see what he's willing to give me. Uh, excuse me? He's not willing to give me peace. After I conquered his city, 
He's not willing to give me peace. You want me to pay you? You're delusional. I'll just raise it next time. So the Sphinx actually do give plus two appeal. So there's like a not many places that they can apply to though. Maybe I should have been incorporating my Sphinx into my plans here. Ooh, maybe I should have. Regret, regret, regret. I mean, with just a little bit of moving of things, we can potentially fit some in. So I've managed to fit a few Sphinx into my build, which I think will be totally net positive for tourism, which is super based. But I think the thing is, we just need to get start settling and get our actual preserves down because we just, you know, so much to do, so little time to do it. Bro, he actually won't pay me. He thinks he's winning this war or else he's just blinded by a desire for revenge. Bro, he's going to make me pay seven gold. I, I suppose I did get pillages, so I think I technically come out better on this war. I knocked one of his cities out of his empire. I killed his entire army. I probably could have kept this up going, but I, I don't want to fight a crossbow. It would be really, really annoying to fight that crossbowman. I'd rather just get it over with, get it done with, and uh, live to fight another day. Right, we're entering into the medley, medieval era, and we've managed to pass 90 turns, and we still don't have a preserve built yet. We're still settling. I really do think that just preserve-based builds are just really weak. Or maybe I'm playing it wrong. But at the very least, this has been a very interesting opening phase of the game. Some interesting firing salvos. Fired salvos? Ooh, I want to buy I want to buy all of these luxuries. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.